Well, Jim Baker is flat on his back, I understand. The low back thing. They can get you out of the draft. Nobody can take away from you. Uh, so, I guess I'll chair it here. And uh, we've got three items I know that come up here. The first one, the Economic Commission of U.S. Trade and the Village. Mr. President, let me make some background comments and then some more uh, specific comments about the situation. In terms of background, I think that we see a, there are quite high levels of unemployment in many major European countries, for instance. Belgium, 13 percent, Denmark, 10 percent. Ireland 16%, Italy 10%, Spain 20%, uh, Turkey 12%, UK 12%, and as you know from all of the material that we talked about during the preparation for the summit, they've had, for all intents and purposes, no employment growth in the last 10 years. And it varies a little bit by country, but the picture is quite stagnant. So there is high levels of unemployment, and there is a sense of stagnation in employment going together. There are concerns that the U.S. and Japan are stepping out smartly, technologically, and they're not quite uh, with it. And there are, no doubt, consequent political problems that are being felt by Cole, by Thatcher, by Mitterrand. We know that they're all sort of down in the polls. And not looking good. At the same time, when we look at the economic environment, and here I'm just giving my opinion, and I expect to get contradicted by all of the assembled economists, but I think we have to remember that this is a very dynamic environment. Oil prices are coming down. Inflation seems to be coming under pretty good control in the industrialized countries and the perception that that's so and likely to remain so for a while is taking hold. The pace I know you. How are, How are you, Mr. You? President? How are you? Fine, sir. Didn't get to say hello the other day. No, sir. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Louis President. Mm -hmm. You're super, Mr. President. Same, <laughs> 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 sir. When the right time, we could have done that. That's right. Mr. President, nice to see you. Bill Stallard from Michigan. Hello there. Bill, California. Good to see you. When I hope you please sit down. Mr. President, this is a group of uh, businessmen and women, most of whom uh, have their own small businesses, and they're here to talk with you about this tax reform. Uh, they are uh, enthusiastic about the tax proposal that you have. Uh, they have some, they've been asking some specific questions about basic items, but I think everyone here understands that this is a total package and one in which you have to give up something in order to get something in terms of rate reduction. Well, it sounds like maybe the remarks that I had here. Uh, it's not necessary that you all know that's already been plowed. I do want to thank all of you here for driving your work and your businesses today to come to interrupt your busy schedules to meet with us. It's true, we did unveil that plan a few weeks ago, and since that time, the polling has shown that about two out of three Americans uh, support it, and I hope that we can count you among that number. Uh, as entrepreneurs, you understand the importance of getting the government out of your way and allowing you to make the kinds of saving and investment decisions that 
will make your businesses grow instead of making decisions based on uh, the threat of tax hanging over you. We think that our plan is designed to lessen government interference and economic decision making to stimulate the pools of venture capital and to lighten the heavy burden under which you have operated up until now. How are you doing? Good to see you. Yes, sir. I think you know how that. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you. How are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Don't ask me where it is. Joe Lanier. All right. I'm so glad to meet you. Nice to see you. Good 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 to see you. Mr. President, I'm in my good company here. I've shut down five plants, lost 2,500 employees. 17,042 of our people have signed a petition asking for your help. They've written over 10,000 letters that were too heavy for us to bring along, but we did bring the petition along with this letter of transmit. We need your help, sir. It's hurting our communities, it's hurting our people. And we would certainly hope you could support us on this trade legislation that's pending in the Congress now. Well, I certainly will look at this with care, and, and uh, certainly that petition will register. We're not, we're not fighting on the level that, no. uh, Mr. President, we've got too much against us. And the only way to turn is to the government to help us on this thing. We appreciate your consideration, favorable consideration, endorsement, and support for this legislation, if you would give it to us. Well, let me. I'm, I'm sure we're not going to do it, believe me. <laughs> All right. This legislation you're talking about out here, Senator Thurman's got that yeah. legislation to us about last Wednesday, yeah. and Ed Jenkins and the House representative. It really sort of, you know, really what they need, they need really your help. They figure you can carry 49 out of 50 states. That you ought to be able to talk to some of these leaders. <laughs> we had a harder time getting here to the White House than you did, Mr. President. <laughs> a lot of harder. Well, we have 283 co-signers in the House. And 52 senators that are co-signers of this bill. So we've got a lot of strong support, and it's spread pretty much throughout the country too. Showing yeah. folks are concerned about it. And the major thrust of the legislation is asking to enforce the existing agreements that aren't being really yeah. enforced. That's the major thrust. Because I know that we have a very many agreements here, and, uh, and that that enforcement that could be a problem on its own. Yes. And. Uh, we will. Of course, as you know, we're, here we are engaged with all our trading partners trying to get everybody to come around to open markets and so forth. And, uh, we just need to take your personal muscle to uh, get their attention. Well, you're, we for, know you're for following agreements that were in existence. Yes. And oh, yes. Since 81, they were supposed to go up to right. seven seven year, and they haven't performed yeah. that. They've doubled in the last two years. Yeah. So they haven't been in some teeth in this. <laughs> this would do it. This would do it. Mr. Vice President, you come in. I want you to. I want you to get. Joe, you get right in the I heard all that. I heard all that. I tried to speak slow. That's so you don't come in between them. Now you get the right thing. Get a right chance. You get a right chance. Oh, I'm going to let him get right there. I'm going to get in the house. Come on, Mr. Jeff. Now I'm ready. Let me get over there on the other side. I'm going to get over there. You don't have both of them together at one time. I tried to get. When one time we were talking, the photographer said, We never got it? No. <laughs> <laughs> this thing could be a real issue in the South. It already is. Yeah, we're not very much concerned. Mr. President, we all pray for you and your leadership role in this crisis going on. And we know you've got a very yes, burden, but we're, we're with you all the way on that. We'll let you know. We're sorry to burden you with this today, oh, but what you've got going on. We can't stop. Well, I, I thought some prayers were with you because of this one tragedy that it may be, but we're hopeful because of some things that have been developing here that we're very hopeful this may end up. Thank you for your I'd, time. I'd like to just tell you something funny. Recently, you know, the national champion basketball team came in here, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Jabbar? Yeah, I, I keep getting, I knew him when he was the basketball, under his own name, and yeah. he was the only, 
I have to tell you, without exaggeration, when he came into this office, he ducked. Go through that door. Whether he needed to or not, I never had a chance to measure his seat, but he came through. <laughs> well, I say it's certainly not at all. Thank right. you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yeah, we, 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 we got faked out of this picture. Yeah, I think it'll kill both of us off, but we ought to get it anyway. Thank you. I'm trying to avoid this picture for a long time. Can we show that to the folks back there? No, no, no. We'll use that picture as a reference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, don't you want to get one between the two? That would be fine. Go ahead, Mickey. All right, here we go. Thank you. 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 Well, listen, I know what you've been doing with the your program, the air board, and yours with the, the family thing, the many good people that you've reached. And uh, you know what a force you've been out there in the corporate world. And I'm delighted to have your support, all of you, for the past program. And, uh, Hear any suggestions you might have? What could you do? Well, we uh, met, Mr. President, with you and Martin Luther King's birthday. Yes. And, uh, we've had a lot of interesting response to been very favorable by the grassroots uh, minority community in the around the country. And uh, one of the proposals that we brought to you at that time was precisely what you're enacting in this tax proposal by eliminating uh, taxes on low income people can't afford. So we uh, will be supporting that tax proposal with enthusiasm and uh, taking the word out around the country. You know, some of the people that have been talking to us about the fourth <coughs> bracket, we've got a fourth bracket, it's zero. <laughs> we feel very strongly about the uh, tax proposal, Mr. President, and we will support it in every way we can. Uh, we receive about 100,000 letters a month from our radio program, and, and we read that mail very carefully and assess it to, uh, to pick up trends of, of where the family is and what its needs are. And I'm absolutely convinced from that mail that... See. Your Eminence, well, it's a great pleasure. Opportunity for me to say congratulations to you. And I think we'll speak to later or later at the end. And I also thank you, Mr. President. Well, thanks. Let's see. Good to see you. Thank you. Tom Alley, Mr. President. How do you do? Nice to see you. Bill Fitzgerald. Yes, hello. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Yes, thank you. Catholics and for Catholics generally, but I happen to believe myself that the greatest hope we have with regard to Eastern Europe and the hold that the Soviets have there is the rising tide of religion among the people. Uh, one of our clergymen, uh, in this instance a Protestant who's been there, told me that where the Soviets uh, have apparently not paid much attention to older people uh, going to the, 
to the churches there. Uh, this gentleman who's been there quite a bit said to look very closely sometimes in the films, the coverage of this at the little old ladies in their babushkas and you'll see some pretty young faces under those babushkas where they know that they're, if they're considered to be old women and so forth, the KGB won't be that attentive. But if, uh, so they pretend to be, but that, that this religious belief is widespread among young people. Tell me back to that, because they are not satisfied with whatever they promising and not doing nothing. And people have to have something to believe in, and they certainly can't believe in their system. <laughs> Secretary Bennett, and in 1979, the program was expanded to include achievements in the arts. And this year, Chairman Beverly White, I want to thank you and all of the commission members for your fine efforts. 41 of our country's finest students, young Americans who can inspire us all, improve American education. Just two years ago, the Department of Education report entitled a nation at risk concluded that if a foreign power had attempted to impose on America the mediocre educational performance that then existed, we might well have viewed it as an act of war. Since then, the three C's can help us to understand the fundamental aspects of good education. And when I looked over your award citations, I realized that the 141 of you here today provide a beautiful illustration of the three C's in practice. The first C is Greg Johnson of Kentucky, grew up in a housing project, the son of a single mother who works at a second job cleaning a bank at night to support her family. He started school in a readiness class for children not quite prepared for first grade. This spring, Greg graduated as the first black valedictorian in the history of his high school. is not a matter of knowledge alone, but of things like honesty, kindness, and loyalty. And the fine schools designed for talented young performers. One of you, Monty Greek of Nebraska, spent his early years in the kind of school that until today, I thought only people my age were influential teachers, they merit a good part of the praise. perceptive mind. I know you will, but you already have joined me in donation. I commend you. You know, sometimes there are pleasant tasks in this job of mine, like this one this morning, but sometimes also there are responsibilities that get very irksome, like the one that I now face, in which without getting a chance to meet each of you individually, I have to turn you over to Secretary Ben. I have that on good authority that that's what I need to do because early in my administration, a metropolitan newspaper asked children, to young people, to write in and tell them what they, advice they would give to the newly elected president, me. And I have never forgotten one of them from an 11-year-old girl. She told me a number of things that I should do. And then she wrote, now, get back to the Oval Office and get to work. So, 
So I'll do that. Thank you all. Congratulations to all of you young people. God bless you.